something you can get this weekend. If you um, can't, you for some reason can't buy any or you're struggling to buy it, um, you can request them from me, but I can only do that for a few students because um, I don't have enough, we don't have enough money to, to buy everybody individual paint tubes. That's why we're asking you to get that yourself. But, and you have to request it from me because I have to make them for I don't have them already pre-made and I have to put them in the office for you. So you've got to give me a day or two to do that if you need that. You will need your paint starting, you know, definitely starting on um, Monday. I am going to show you paint today, but you don't necessarily have to start painting today if you're not ready. This, these lobsters make me want to go to the beach. Not that I've ever seen a lobster at the beach, but <laughs> they just make me think of the beach. The only thing I've ever really seen on a beach are jellyfish and crabs and fish and birds I've never seen. I did see a couple seals once and some whales, but oh, I guess nah, now that I think about it, starfish, if you go to the tide pools, you can see all the starfish and the sea anemones and all the little crabs but I've never seen a lobster before I don't think they live they don't live in the tight pools I don't they live down deeper so once you get all your shapes cut out then you have to cut them up so I'm kind of reminding you of the stages here. There's going to be a many, many stages to this project, you guys. By the time you're done with these paintings, you won't even recognize your original stuff, your original object. It's just going to be a distant memory buried and hidden between layers of paint and collage and kind of like that Joan Mitchell. Or the Lee Krasner. Lee Krasner, remember Lee Krasner? She was the artist that um, we looked at Jackson Pollock and Lee Krasner a couple periods ago. And hers was the painting on top. It had all the bigger um, pink and black kind of triangular shapes in it. She was famous for actually doing a bunch of paintings and then cutting up her actual paintings, like the canvas. She would cut it up and then collage a new painting with a bunch of cut up paintings. So this, this project is a little bit inspired by her work. And at the time, that was not something painters did. She was not very popular for doing that in her lifetime, at least. Now people, of course, love her paintings and they probably are worth millions and millions of dollars. Okay, so the next step is you take that pile of all of your objects that you haven't cut up yet, and we have our watercolor paper. So remember the watercolor paper is um, thicker, makes kind of like a cardboard sound, and we're gonna, we need the thicker paper because we're gonna paint on this. Okay, so now this is the fun part where we get to actually like cut into our objects and we need to let go at this point we're going to let go of what these things are and we're going to make them into abstractions and i just like to kind of be spontaneous with it just kind of go in and start cutting You can cut them up more later if you decide it's not enough. And then think about maybe even cutting out shapes. Like I just cut a big circle out of this. 
And that's neat because then I can put it down and make another shape. This, this uh, little lobster looks like a walrus. This one looks like a hermit crab. I'm looking at the chat right now here. It says, can I make the background paper smaller? My objects are, in nope. Got to keep it the same size as this. We're going to be um, painting in the background. So if your objects are smaller, that is okay. You're just going to have to paint more. I don't want you to make your paper smaller. It's a good question though. Okay, I think I've cut everything up. So now this is the fun part where we get to arrange things. So you have to decide. You don't have to decide right now. You can move it around, but are you going to be doing a, a portrait view, which is the long, longest from the top to bottom? Or are you going to be doing a landscape view, which is longer from side to side, the width longer? I think I'll start with the landscape for now. And this is where we really play around with positive and negative space. So the positive space is the lobster and the negative space is the white of the paper. And we want to keep that balanced, right? We're not going to have a symmetrical artwork at this point. It's not going to be the same on both sides because we have all these different shapes to put in here. So we have to find asymmetrical balance. And um, try to use everything, but you don't have to. If you're finding that it's too much and you like the simplicity a little bit more, then that's fine too. And we're you can even try to find other ways of making things. Like I could take these two circular forms and put them together, even though they're from different lobsters. And you could make new shapes out of your old shapes. And that's sort of the fun part. You can also cut the sides of your paper. You don't necessarily have to have a rectangle shape canvas. So you, these could be going off of the page if you wanted that. Because this is interesting negative space too, up there. Trying to also find a balance of color. So if I have like orange dots here, then I might want to put these orange dots somewhere over here. So they're nice and balanced. Oh, that's neat. I just made a, a triangle of negative space right there. That's cool. This is the discovery part when you get to move things around and play. And once you find the composition that you like, then you can start gluing things down. can overlap. Let me try to focus on this a little bit more. Zoom in. Sometimes my camera doesn't like the white paper. It just kind of washes everything out. I'm really digging these negative spaces that are happening with the shapes. Like I have one here. I have one here. I might want to make one over here. I can even make shapes within my shapes. Like I just made a triangle right there. I can connect lines. I 
could even kind of allude to that lobster tail by putting that one down there. Allude means I'm kind of like suggesting that there's a lobster there, but not, not putting the full lobster in there. I think I might use all my shapes here. Because you see he's got his little claws here in his face, but then there's a bunch of different things happening here, and then a different body and a different tail. I'll probably paint over all of that, but for now it looks cool. Well, I've got two more pieces and I'm not convinced I need them. I feel like it's pretty full. I think for now I'm going to leave those out. Okay, so I have to spend a moment gluing these down and then I can start painting. I have a giant jug of glue here because I don't, I ran out of glue sticks. But I only need a little bit because I'm just going to kind of tack these down. A gallon of Elmer's glue will last you for a lifetime. Okay, so I could use my finger, which I'm going to do, or you could use a, a popsicle stick or a, um, another piece of paper, whatever you want. I'm just going to kind of tack things down. So I'm just going to do a quick swipe with my finger. Make sure to get onto the, the very bottom layer of your collage here. You can hear the theater um, class happening next door. Makes me feel like Charter is back when I can hear theater kids outside my room practicing their monologues, play fighting. You guys hear them? I can, like, I barely heard them. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I mostly hear Miss Pollard, but I, once in a while I can hear a student. Especially when they're doing their warm-ups and breathing, breathing and yelping and stuff. It's really fun. I, I feel really lucky to be in this wing because it's not it's not just one art form in this wing. We've got theater, we've got visual arts, we've got digital arts, we've got physics, we've got uh, biology, we got, we just got everything in this wing. It just makes life, like Mr. Landry outside today was teaching the seniors how to exercise on a rowing machine. <laughs> he was out there on a rowing machine teaching the seniors how to do it. It was, it was quite entertaining watching him. And yesterday, you guys are going to see this sometime in the next week or two, but yesterday all your visual arts teachers did a Bob Ross competition for ASB, so you'll, you'll see that, you'll see that soon. Vote for me. <laughs> Vote for my painting. No, that's not fair. Vote for whichever one you think is the best Bob Ross painting. But it was really fun. It was fun. We were all outside and we worked on it for about a half an hour. 
It's hard. Hard to do a Bob Ross painting in half an hour. He was skilled at finishing those paintings very quickly. I have a whole new respect for him now. Okay, so most of my shapes were all tacked down now. And I'm going to be painting on top of these too. Everything's going to have paint. I mean, we don't want to cover up all of our collage because what would be the point of putting it there? But we're going to kind of use it as a guide for what's next. So my glue isn't really dry yet, but everything's tacked down. Good enough. Now this is when I can kind of decide um, if I maybe want to cut into my the edges of my picture plane. So what do I mean by that? Well, oops, one more piece here flying free. There we go. Um, so the picture plane is the edge of your piece of paper. And because I have so much fun shape here and it's all going off the page, I don't really necessarily need to to have this edge here. So I could like I could keep it or I could maybe cut some interesting shapes into it so it becomes more um, organic, organically kind of fitting with the shapes that are in my collage. See how much more fun that is to go around the edge here and change that. So consider that before you paint, because now all of a sudden we have much kind of a more of a sculptural thing. You can even get fancy and like cut into some of the negative spaces, but don't go too crazy with that because we need that to paint on. So don't go cutting up the, the center too much, maybe one or two little shapes. I'm just changing it um, slightly so that it'll look, I don't know, now it's got a really interesting fun shape to it. Okay, so this is the stage at which I hope you're at by the end of class today. I really want you to be done with your collaging and gluing of your shapes down. So that's your goal. But if you're done with that already, then I'm going to show you the next step. The next step is to paint. So the first thing I want you to do is choose a color scheme. So a color scheme is a combination of colors that relate to each other on the color wheel. So today when we were looking at Joan Mitchell, we chose a warm color scheme. So you could choose a warm color scheme or you could choose a cool color scheme or you could choose a complementary color scheme which are colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. Let me go grab my color wheel so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm going to pull one up because this my other my physical color wheel seems to be buried somewhere okay so I'm going to share my screen here so color schemes. So we've got our primary colors, right, which are yellow, blue, and red. And then we have our secondaries, which are orange, purple, and green. And then we have our tertiaries, which are in between our primaries and our secondaries, and they're a combination of both. So an orange-yellow would be yellow and orange, and an orange-red would be orange and red. So a color scheme is a combination of two or more colors, typically three. And warm colors are gonna be on one side of the color wheel, so reds and yellows and oranges. And then your cool colors are gonna be on the other side of the color wheel, like blues and greens. Okay, so it can, you can get more complicated with that and choose 
a complementary color scheme, which is yellow and purple, so colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel are complementary. Colors that are next to each other on the color wheel are analogous. So you could do like yellows and greens or purples and reds. Um, and then a monochromatic color scheme is one color with shades and tints of that color. So you could do shades and tints of any of the color schemes you want, which means you can mix black and white into your paint to make your colors e either um, lighter or darker. So what I suggest you do is really look at the colors that are already in your artwork. So right now the colors that are in my artwork are mostly oh, kind of a combination of cool and warm. So I could do something that would complement that. So I could choose like if I had a bunch of reds and greens, maybe I could do, um, hang on a sec another complement um, which would be maybe blues and oranges might be kind of fun to put in the background or I could keep it really simple and go monochromatic and just choose maybe one color that I see that's dominant in here and do shades and tints of that I'm gonna, I think I might do that because that sounds pretty simple and fun so obviously red is a dominant color in here um, maybe I should go the opposite of that though Maybe I'll do like a mint green, like a monochromatic green. So how do I do that? Well, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get something to mix your paint on. And that could be anything. It could be a piece of cardboard. It could be another piece of watercolor paper. It could be a palette. If you have a palette at home, that's fine too. And you're gonna wanna go and grab the paint that you need to make your color scheme. So if I'm gonna be making mint green, I just need yellow, blue, and white, and I'm probably gonna grab that. Uh, Miss Green, I mean, Granager, uh -huh. I have a question. Sure. Um, if you're doing like, say, warm color scheme, can mm -hmm. you do different shades of yellow, orange, and red? Yes, you can do different shades and tints. All right, you guys, I'm going to grab my paint. I'll probably be using a palette. Miss Bellinger? Uh-huh. Uh, are we supposed to post a whip today? Um, let me double check Schoology. I always usually do have you post a whip, but I'm not sure if I put that up there. Yes. Okay. You do? Yes. So everyone should be work, should have been working today. Remember I announced that at the start of class. So you shouldn't have any problem posting a whip today if you were uh, working and following directions. Got my paint and a little bit of a black explosion here. using a pretty small paintbrush because I really don't have that much space to paint. So I gave you guys two paintbrushes. 
Um, one of them was smaller than the other, so I would use the small one. Okay. So it's three o'clock right now. Um, if you want to start painting now, you can. Um, you can you can also paint through office hours unless you, not in my class necessarily, but you know you can keep painting after class ends if you don't have office hours to run to. So I think I'm going to grab another palette to actually mix my paint on because sometimes palettes are really too small. Right? You have to pour your paint in it and all of a sudden you need something else to actually mix your paint. So I'm going to go grab one. We have these giant palettes in the classroom that you can tell people have been painting on these for a very long time because they have layers and layers and layers of paint on them. And so I, I prefer to have a lot of space to work here. Let's get that refocused. Okay, so we're not going to paint over all the things. And she might be wondering, well, uh, what do I do now? What is the next step? How do I know where to put the paint? This is the part where you have to get let go and just let it be abstract. So the first step you might want to do is mix, just mix your color. So if I'm doing a monochromatic color scheme, I'm going to mix a lot of that one color. And remember my color is going to be green. So I'm just kind of grabbing almost all the blue that I have and I'm going to grab all the yellow that I have and I'm going to make a nice green. Now I prefer that you mix your colors. Um, so if you bought a paint set that has green in it, I prefer that you learn how to mix your green by using your primaries. So um, only use the three primary colors in your paint set to get your secondaries and your tertiaries. So I had to mix yellow and blue to get this green. Okay, so now I have kind of a middle green so I want to make that value scale. So if I want some darker greens, then I'm going to grab a little bit of black and I'm going to mix it in with my green. Just a little bit of that green. And then I got to clean my brush really well because I don't want any black in the tint of my green. The tint is only white in the color. So now I'm going to grab some of that green and pull it over here. And then I'm going to grab some white. And then I'm going to try to get different values of that green. Right now I only have three values. I've got this light, this light, light color. Let me zoom in on my palette. I've got this light green, which is kind of like my mint. And then I've got the green, and then I've got the shade of green. So I can make more. Grab a little bit more of that green and less white. I have kind of like a, a greener tint and then I could take this I could take the white and go even brighter whiter with a tiny little bit of green in there so I have a nice highlight okay so now I have one two three four five I could go one shade darker with that but that's pretty dark so I just have, you know, it's, it's good to mix a bunch of different colors first before you start adding your color. So you have options. Okay, so I kind of prefer sometimes to go dark to light when I'm um, trying to model something or make something look like it has some dimension, which you don't necessarily have to do. You can just be spontaneous. But I'm just going to go in here and start 
adding some of my darker values. And you can paint right over on top of your collage. You can paint around your collage. Let me move it over so you can see what I'm doing. So you can paint around your collage. You can paint on top of your collage. It's really, I just want you to be spontaneous about this part. Right now I'm going to try to create some depth. So I'm going to lay some dark down and then I'm going to grab some medium tone and kind of like scumble it in there on top of the dark. And then I'm going to grab, maybe clean my brush because I don't want the black in there. And then I'm going to grab some of my tints of green and lay them in there. And then I'm going to grab it, grab an even brighter tint. You can even have brush stroke in there, right? Like Joan Mitchell. Look, remember Joan Mitchell's crazy brush strokes? Doesn't have to be smooth. And then I might even drop a little highlight on top of there. You could have some impasto texture, like the thickness of the paint still showing up. Okay, so now all of a sudden I have this like, what? This weird dimension, this sort of portal in between all of this. And I'm going to continue on with that. So I'm just going to keep working into my negative spaces here. And I think I'm going to start with all the darks first. I'm just going to go around and see where I might want to drop some dark in. It doesn't have to be everywhere. It doesn't have to be anything. It has to just be whatever your instincts tell you to do. That's the fun part about abstract art. This is its kind of instinct. Where, where do you think it'll look good? Where's your brain telling you you need to lay that dark line down? Now acrylic paint dries really fast, so if you want to do any blending, you kind of have to work quick. Play around with texture. You can paint over your drawing a little bit too. The more you draw paint under and over your collage, the more three-dimensional your painting will be. The space is going to be confusing, but it'll be interesting. Okay, so as I'm working on this, it's 309. I want you guys to have an opportunity to ask me questions or show me your work, or, but I want you to do it um, by just, I'm gonna pin your video, or you're just gonna hold it up so that I can continue to my demonstration, but also help you. So does anyone need any feedback? I know um, one of you asked, Christian asked for some feedback. Um, if you'd like to do that right now, feel free. It's not, it's not a requirement, but it's an option. Um, I haven't given a due date yet. 
I, I don't really like to give due dates um, this early on in a project because um, there's a lot more stages left to this. So I have to just kind of go at the pace that you guys are going, okay? Um, I do have daily goals and your daily goal for today is to finish your collage and glue it down. If you don't reach that goal, you're not getting marked down. It's just a kind of a marker of um, where you probably should be if you're going to hit the big goal of finishing on time. Okay. I learned a long time ago teaching art that if you set a due date too early on, you always have to move it. <laughs> and that's, that's just a little bit too confusing for everybody. So. But my goal for myself right now is to try to get my monochromatic paint on before I clean up. Starting to, it's kind of looking black and white. It probably looks black and white to you guys because it, because that green is very gray. Maybe I'll mix a bluer, yellower green here. Drop a little brightness in there. Remember, this is only the first layer of paint. You will have more opportunities. You could even, the next layer of paint could be warm colors. But you can, you're starting to see, wow, I don't even recognize that lobster anymore. No one needs any feedback? Uh, Ms. Greninger, can yeah. I have feedback? Yeah, of course. Okay, I'm pinning you. Um, I'm going to hold it up now. Okay. Ooh, I love it. So you used, um, tell me that color scheme you used. Um, I did analogous. Analogous? Uh -huh. I don't really know what it's called. Um, that, purple that's the and second red. one is right, analogous. Purple and red. I really like that. I like that you painted on top. And underneath and you kind of balanced out your red lines and your purple um, it's looking great thank you you're welcome um do you have any suggestions um, hold it up one more time I would say more paint like make it thicker add more lines fill in the negative space okay that's yeah. good thank you you're welcome Um, may I have feedback? Yes. Who who just asked for feedback? Um, Catherine. Lee. Catherine. Okay. Hi, Catherine. Yeah. Um, I I just finished gluing. Oh wow! I love that you have kind of a pastel thing going on, and then you have a really intense dark line in blue and red. And then you made some really beautiful negative spaces in between. It kind of looks like a giant butterfly taking off. That's gorgeous. Yeah. So is the red and the black, is that paint or is that part of your collage? Huh? Oh, uh, I just finished gluing them down. So it's okay, fine. so you haven't painted anything yet. Gotcha. Well, that's going to be fun to start painting on. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't really have any feedback for you other than trying to fill, maybe trying to fill a lot of that outside negative space with some bold um, colors or lines to balance out the collage. 
Okay, I'll I'll do that. Okay, great. All right, you guys, it's um, 3.15, so now is the time, especially if you're painting, to consider um, getting cleaned up, and then you're going to take a picture of your whip and post it. And this is no matter what stage you're in, please post a whip. And here, I'm going to clue you in on the whips. I, I don't ever grade, unless I really see that you haven't done any work on it, I might not give you credit, but for the most part, if you post it, you get credit. So don't ever not post a whip because you didn't get very far. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the paint that I have down so far. Um, I, I'm a real high contrast kind of gal. I really like bold lines and bold color. Um, so I put down a lot of really dark green so that it kind of pops. And then of course, if you're painting, um, you really wanna make sure to wash your brushes. So I'm gonna put this in a safe place so that my puppy or my kitty can't walk on it. I put it up high, a sibling can't sit on it. And then you wanna take your paint palette and your brush to the sink. And when you clean your brush, you wanna sweep your fingers this way. You never wanna put your brush down on the sink and scrum scumble it like that because you're gonna push all the bristles, up, bristles out and it's gonna um, ruin the brush. So you wanna just run it under the water and kinda of sweep it and sculpt it you, if you really want to get the paint out, you can do a little bit of this. But you really just want to keep it so that it doesn't lose its shape. And then let it dry, but of course don't put it down in a cup like this to dry. Because it'll spread the bristles out too. Alright, I'm going to wash my fingers real quick and I'll be right back. I'm going to take all this stuff to the sink too. All right. Okay, do I have any questions before um, we close out class soon?